Welcome back to the new Music Alliance Radio Hour. I'm Mark Ramon, joined this week by the one, the only, the play mistress herself, Mistress Miriam. Hi. And you, you <laughs> just heard Patty Lupin doing a rendition of Anything Goes. Before that, Barbara Streisand doing Miss Marmelstein. And we started off with Francine Lafrac with four Jews in a room bitching. <laughs> can I can I just say Please. That, that we shouldn't do like a disclaimer or something saying indicating that we're we don't condone any stereotypes presented in this playlist? <laughs> this, if anybody out there is wondering, like if you haven't figured this one out yet, this this is a playlist of all musical theater, right? <laughs> yeah, I love show tunes. We love show tunes and we love musical theater. And some of the greatest composers of musical theater are from Western New England. I didn't they, realize that. They are. They are. Do we start from the back or the beginning? Or Let's go to Patti Lupon. So Patti Lupon. So Anything Goes, very famous musical written by Cole Porter, who is one of the many famous alums of Yale University, which is ah. New Haven, Connecticut. And of course, Cole Porter, when he was at Yale, wrote a number of musicals and wrote a number of fight songs like the Bulldog, Bulldog, Bow Wow. wow. Really? Yes, he did. Huh. He, yeah. And they still sing that to this day. Oh, cool. Bulldog, bulldog bow, wow, wow. And, um, you know, so his, his musical history and his musical roots are still there in New Haven at Yale. And this is one of his most famous musicals. And Patti Lapone, the great Patti Lapone, the big famous Broadway actress, she also... Emmy Award winning actress and film actress. I saw this production a long time. In 1987? In 1987. I was 17 years old. Wow. I, I, yeah, I was in high school in New Jersey and I went with my friends. I I had a driver's license and we went into New York City to, to, um, to uh, Lincoln Center and saw this production. And it was fantastic. And, and I love when they do these recordings and you can hear all the tap dancing mm. on the recording. Yeah. This is a classic show. Yeah. And that is so cool that you got in the car with your friends at such a young age and ventured into the big city. I, I'm picturing it in my head. It sounds so cool. I did it all the time. I did oh. it all the time. When Before I had a, a license, I would take the bus with friends where I go, you know, have my parents take me, you know, as a young music fan, as a young theater fan and everything, and living in a suburb of New York, I, I took advantage and went and did it. Like many of our audience members out there, I'm sure. Like you, I'm sure. Yeah. That's what you do right now. <laughs> you travel all over the place. I do, I do. <laughs> And how did you get Barbara Streisand into your playlist? How did I get Barbara Streisand into my playlist? Well, Harold Rome, who wrote the musical I Can Get It For You Wholesale, which was written in 1962, is from Hartford, Connecticut. Wow. Yes. He's a lyricist and a um, and composer. And this was Barbara Streisand's big breakout Broadway role. I think she was 19 or something like that. Wow. And Miss Marmelstein, Miss Marmelstein, Marmelstein. And so here we have it, Barbara Streisand. I don't know if she spends much time in Western New England, but she certainly was on the stage and famous because of somebody who was from Western New England. That is so cool. I and mean, it's really cool that this was her debut on Broadway. And the sky was the limit from there. She became such a huge icon in American history. Huge, huge, huge. There's so many stories, but there's just too many to tell from there. I mean, there's actually somebody who saw her in this who then went to cast her in Funny Girl. 
but that's wow. a whole other story. Yeah, Harold Rome. I mean, he was he was a big deal. I was looking at it from like the historical perspective. Born in 1908, and he's kind of passing the torch on to Barbara Streisand, who became like a huge star for the latter half of the century. It was kind of cool. It is kind of cool. It's it's very very cool. This is cool. That's a very good way of looking at it. And then we get to yet a, yet like a younger person than Barbara Streisand, who is William Finn, who wrote Falsettos, which we started the block off with four Jews in a room bitching. Uh, Falsettos written by William Finn. He was born 1952. So he's kind of like a the next generation of musical theater people. He went to Williams College, but he now resides part-time in New York City and part-time in Pittsfield, Massachusetts, because he's the co-founder and the artistic producer of the Musical Theater Lab at the Barrington Stage Company in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. Pittsfield, Massachusetts. Pittsfield, Massachusetts. How long have you been living up here? I only live in Massachusetts. <laughs> Pittsfield, Massachusetts. But William Finn, I also saw this production wow. on Broadway. This show, Falsettos, came out of two separate shows that he wrote. William Finn identifies strongly with being Jewish and identifies strongly with being gay. This is a very Jewish show, as we can see from the opening number. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, a, and also a very gay show and audience. I was telling Mark during our little break that a lot of musical theater people love to get together and say, hey, what, what do we think the best opening number of a show is? And Four Jews in a Room Bitching is a, is a popular one. I think it's a great opening number to a show. But William Finn is so funny and he is so profound. This is a play about family and relationships, about a man who left his wife because he came out of the closet. And they have a son who has a bar mitzvah. And the wife ends up marrying her ex-husband's shrink. Oh, boy. I know. It's just like a whole. And they have the lesbians who live next door. And one of them is a... <laughs> Nouvelle bar mitzvah cuisine caterer, and the other is a doctor who diagnoses patients with AIDS because the AIDS crisis happened during a time when when William Finn was writing, and so he ended up writing a second play about this, and one of the characters became HIV positive and got AIDS, and then he combined these two plays about the, you know, the family and the husband leaving the wife. And, and now we have a second play with the husband's partner getting AIDS um, and putting them together and becoming a play with two acts. And it's very funny and it's very profound and sad and you'll laugh and you'll cry. That was very typical of Broadway. <laughs> I know, but really... I mean, very much. So. And William Finn, it really, he's, I didn't realize, I never heard of him before. And I'm looking, he's won a Tony Award in 92 for Best Original Score and Best Book of a Musical. Did uh, a brain, a new brain in 98 and the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee in 2005. Yeah. Now he's, he's a big deal. Now he's 72 and he's, he's still going. Good. Uh, Yes, good. And uh, I'd love to see a, they they recently did a a uh, did this um, play recently, I think at Lincoln Center again, but it'd be fun fun to do a show up here at, you know, in the valley, do some William Finn, do falsettos. Whoever's out there, I I could do the Nouvelle Bar Mitzvah cuisine, everybody. Anyone casting the play? Let's set it up at the Calvin. Yes, let's set it up at <laughs> Calvin, Mr. Producer. <laughs> it would end up being like the producers. 
<laughs> a failed show and a good tax write-off. So, Miriam, what do we have for our next block? <laughs> next, we have the band 22BB in the office. <laughs> 